welcome to Slumber Party. Today's episode we have Art in Progress. This is Mr. Steve Keane. He is currently painting five uh, canvases. Well, they're not really canvases, are they, Steve? No, uh, this is Laoon board. It is uh, 789 a sheet at uh, Lowe's in Charlottesville, and I bring it home and cut it up, and I paint my pictures all at once. And you normally do five at a time? Usually eight. Eight. This uh, was the only bit that uh, fit in the truck today. Oh, so. I see. Well, Steve is from Charlottesville. I think he said that. He did. Yeah. But I'm reiterating. You. Thank you. And uh, he's a prolific artist. Is that fair? I'm very yeah. I'm very prolific, and uh, do a lot of pictures too. And um, hmm. no, I think I should be doing this probably for a while. Okay. Paint. Paint, Steve. You know, you really can't avoid this all day. There are two naked men in the bed right beside you. Well, I was just hoping that no one would I know, I know you were, but, okay. but you know, well, get 30 minutes like to address it. I wouldn't like to address it all. I'd like you to address it. Okay, boys, why are you naked? Because uh, this is how we sleep, you know. Oh. You know, we, you've invited us to your bed, and uh, this is uh, this is our uh, natural habitat right here. Uh, okay. Not necessarily your bed. But but. <laughs> I think it's such a drag for the audience, really, of. Uh, the TV station that they don't get to see, you know, the slumber party afterwards when we're gonna all get in the hot tub down here with Lucy. Well, we great. don't know. I mean, look we don't at Lucy. Want... Wouldn't it be great to get like uh, mm -hmm. naked with Lucy and jump around the hot tub? Hot tub. Yeah, sure. It's great. It's yeah. worth it to come do this. Don't do it today though, because she's got like TB or something. No, it's not TB. It's what just is like it? Bronchitis. Bronchitis. These are. Um, this is. These are friends from Ecomedia. Ecomedia. Sean, <laughs> Ecomedia, and Ron, and Eric, and Victoria. Hey, Miles. Hey, Eric. Hi, Miles. How are you? I'm oh, fine, Sean. How are you? Yeah, it's nice to meet you. It's yeah. nice to meet you, too. Yeah, it's, I feel it's like this is... You can make eye contact as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like we met like 10 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. 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 This is like one of those uh, jokes in the men's magazines, you know, where the guy, you find the guy in the bed, you know, like, oh, uh, we're here to uh, get your tax or something like that. <laughs> like that. Yeah, so I'm feel, I feel like I'm invite, invading your private space here. Not at all. So for a public space. Yeah. Oh! Sorry, I'm just getting distracted. Giving you the willies, huh? <laughs> um, and Ecomedia Vince Punks have produced a film just recently, and you brought us a clip from your film. Where did? No, we forgot it. Yeah, we yeah. forgot it. See, oh. the, we're always late. <laughs> we're total amateurs. They're completely fuck up naked, all the time. and yeah. they forgot their clip. Yeah, that's right. Forgot yeah. the clip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you remember? Yeah. Oh, I know. So You're gonna, we, we remember what the clip was about. The it's clip Columbus, was, though, right? Columbus? Yeah, it was. Uh, it's Colum. Is actually the name of the movie. Oh, I thought it was Colon. So you know, like a Spanish pronunciation. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Well, that's our. That's you can get away with uh, pronouncing it that way, but it's actually colon. Colon. Yeah. It's and about it was corporate people, you know. Colon. Scatological. Got gotcha. Scatological. I was like that. And it was the non-Hollywood version. Right. Right. This is the anti-Hollywood version. I'm sorry. Yeah. What? what the anti-Hollywood version. The, the fuck Hollywood. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you. The fuck right. Hollywood. Yeah. And and what inspired you? Uh, we wanted to make a movie that would have uh, 50 naked guys and. Uh, you know, um, and we know our audience pretty well, and I guess we figured that uh, Columbus is as good a chance as any is getting 50 naked guys in one place. You know? uh, what inspired us was the uh, the poor quality of uh, entertainment that uh, United Artists and Paramount and all those other big uh, production houses, distributors, they put out uh, a lot of crap. You know, it's time to, uh, <laughs> to you know, get some quality out there, get something that like uh, really confuses some people, you know. It's a really entertaining to see people come see? out of the theater with their heads turned sideways. I've got to see this movie again. You know, they just don't understand. And you achieve it. <laughs> That's why they want to see it again. Right, it's it's always naked. Oh, yeah, yeah. But there were many successes with the movie. It was great. And how did you find your naked man? Was this an audition thing? Uh, friends and family, you know, just uh, favors and all this kind Beer of thing that we pizza. had to cash in. Beer and pizza. Beer and pizza, yeah. That's a good and Victoria, your role in the film? I play Roy Galen. And who is Roy Galen? The who? Who is the poetry student? Poetry student. Oh, I thought this was like Columbus or something. Well, yes, but so you had to have you know, a poetry student on the ship. Hero. Yeah. No, well, on the her heroine. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, she's a heroine. Actually, the movie's about Marco Polo. But it's called Colon. It's called Colon. Yeah. Actually, the movie's about. I must like, totally uh, misunderstood what this movie was. About. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, so did everybody who saw it. You know. Hey, so, well, uh, awesome. yeah. I don't feel so bad now. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Didn't <coughs> Yeah. I'm still confused. Yeah. It's about uh, people who do the same thing every day, you know, what happens to them. Yeah. You know, you ever notice, like, all these guys, you know, in the 
Washington Post in the obituary section, you know, they're 79 years old, and they were lawyers all their lives for Admiral Rickover or something like that, and they all die of, like, they have colon cancer or cancer of the intestine or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and you think there's some eschatological or scatological significance to this? Yeah, you? definitely, definitely. People who are uh, working you know, in the bowels of Yeah, yeah, if you sit in a chair all day with 100 people farting in your face, man, you're going to get colon Ooh. cancer. It's inevitable. Ooh. You know? And on that happy note, shall we have a look and see how our author's doing? Let's go over to the panel cam. Panel cam. Wow. So oh, this is Lucy, isn't it? Yeah, this is Lucy in her play last night. Are you yeah. Can you get a close-up? Red overalls? No, actually, I don't, but that's a nice interpretation. She of my sort head. of had a pantsuit on for a while. Oh, no, it was it it incredibly it's short. Yeah, really short uh, uh, skirt. She was, she was good in the play last night. Uh-huh. And skirt. funky pumps, but she has it. Yeah, they're not painted in yet. Okay. Does it take me back to my house pump? Yes, yes, the, the, I can't run very fast, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So, Okay, so you, so you had a big hit with, uh, with Colin, We're confusing everybody. Um, well, a big hit, I mean... Uh, I saw full page ads. We took a big hit. Yeah, yeah. You took a big hit. Yeah, we took a big hit on it, yeah, yeah. Oh, you it, it, wasn't, it wasn't as uh, successful financially as the first movie we made, Colin had his wake, yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, it was a big hit psychologically, and really the whole... You made, you feel good, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, there was some really, there was some really, you know, you lose a lot of friends, you lose a lot of family, you lose a lot of people that you feel really close to, and you love borrow money from them to make the movie. And you borrow money around. from them, but you also show them an attitude that they really don't want to see. Everybody wants to say, you know, Miles, you're okay, I'm okay, everybody's okay, you tell you me. You don't have okay. this problem, right? No, we don't <laughs> do that shit, man. No, no, no. But the, the film, actually, I was very surprised. Um, <laughs> given that your, your limited budget and also your time restraints, I think that you did a terrific job. Yeah, we from beginning to end it was what two two and a half months. Yeah, it was a miracle really for the for the time. And we the money. actually had to cancel the very first screening of the very first day of showing the movie because Edit. the cat no the credits weren't finished yeah. yet. You know, it was like uh, handwritten. You know, yeah. sitting there shooting it, just flipping the pages, flipping the pages. It was, uh, Fortunately, I didn't have to take part in any of that, like, uh, frenzied activity. Yeah. So what did you yeah, have to do with all this, Eric? You're so quiet and you're wearing clothes, which is rather unusual for this group. Yeah, I have a particular philosophy about my nudity that I want to get paid for it. <coughs> so I feel like, you know, like Donna and these other people who sort of wait a while. But, you know, someday I'm making an investment. Like He's got a point. I'm glad you should have thought of yeah, this. Yeah. But I see like, these pillows are very oddly placed, you know, and it's like there's an unusual sort of symmetry between their locations. So I feel like <laughs> Meanwhile, every cameraman shoots up to the ceiling. Yeah, right. That's the case. It could be moved here. <laughs> <laughs> the light. No, but as far as like the movie, I think that our group, Beta Punks, we sort of united to make these video movies. It was a, it was a, just a real clear strategy that you take a video camera and a good script, you put them together with some people who know how to plug in these little things behind VCRs, and over the course of a couple weeks, just borrowing Twinkies and, and dollar bills for cab rides, you can make a movie that handily competes with the bullshit that Hollywood's making. I mean, the, the, uh, the, the last Columbus movie that came out was called uh, 1492, Gerard Depardieu. But everybody uh, thought those really movies stuck. stuck. I mean, it wasn't. It's, exactly. It's they did like, like the Ten Commandments. But about, wait, the Ten Commandments is wonderful. <laughs> 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 they don't think so, I guess, huh? What's the last good Hollywood movie you saw? Or did you ever see a good one? Where's your Messiah now? Um, there was one the other day that I saw that I was I thought was uh, okay, but I can't remember what it was. They just they just sort of they blitz you with uh, the promotion, the marketing. You go see it, your expectations are high. You see it. You just, yeah. I saw a piece of shit the other day. Kevin Klein and Elizabeth Mastrangelo called Consenting Adults. That was embarrassing. It was the kind of thing that you did when you were like six years old playing house. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. These people are nuts. And the thing that's really bad about it is that there's this, always this effort to sort of like pretend that what they're doing is it's really good wrong. and really worthwhile and it's art. Yeah. This, this art is. I, I think we pride ourselves on not, if, if we're any kind of artist, we're bullshit artists. We're not artists. The other side Sorry, Steve. That's that all right. That you pay six bucks to see it. I mean, they, they got you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they take, their, they take their money. Millions and millions of dollars. And uh, it's, not, uh, it's not worth it. The, that's not really the studio's fault. That's the people's fault. I mean, people are bored to death. And so oh, they look they're around and they're just going to go see a movie. So why not go see the one with the biggest hype? It's just a real problem. Well, now, so how do you reconcile that with, with your? I saw a full-page ad for mm -hmm. for Colin and the City Paper. I mean, that's you guys still got a market. And, and, this is the right. This is, this is the, that's the. The devil, proof is in the pudding. It? The proof is in the pudding. Right, and you want to see a sticky right. pudding. Yet. Right, right. People come and see the movie. They eat the pudding. They right. go back home and they say, "Hey, the pudding's good." Now, unfortunately, with us with the, with Cologne, it was so obscure that people went and saw it, and they needed the review to come out in the Washington Post to remind them that it was very good. A lot right. of people were sort of 
you know, one foot was always sort of out the door because first of all, there's all the naked men and people just have a bit of a problem with that. And uh, there's not very many movies when you think about it that have more than one naked guy in it. There True. just are not, unless there are. very few full frontals. Certainly American films, anyway. Yeah, right. Mel, Gere, Mel Gibson's yeah. ass. Yeah. Mel Gibson's ass and Richard Gere's front. Right. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, for two seconds from like a long, uh, he was on the other side of the room. <laughs> right. It wasn't really his front, it was a three quarter, uh, you know, sort I'm of. I'm not going to obsess about it, okay? <laughs> I just I caught it. I looked at it. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> But see, yeah, that's that's kind of pathetic, you know. What uh, uh, well, PMRC don't have any will let of anybody. I mean, you know, people aren't new to American movies. I saw a movie. Yeah, I saw true. a movie that was really terrible with uh, Burt Young and Eric Roberts um, and uh, Daryl Hannah. I can't remember the name about it. It was some sort of gypsy thing in New York, mafia type of thing. And Daryl Hannah comes into a room and they're talking. They're talking about a plot device to move this torpid movie along. It's like dying in the harbor. And they're trying to get some plot going. And while they're getting the plot going, Daryl Hannah takes off her shirt and changes it. No, Why? Why? It's because everybody in the theater, they go home and they say, hey, I saw Daryl Hannah's tits. It was really cool. But Daryl oh. Hannah's the only one that's ever been nude in a Walt Disney movie. I mean, you got to figure, <laughs> this is the one woman in the world who isn't sexy. I mean, she takes all of her clothes off and she's still G-rated, you know? I don't know why, but she's just like a... a well, you must have a sister that looks like Daryl Hannah or something no, I like that. I think for a lot of people, Daryl Hannah is actually quite attractive. Yeah. yeah, she's a good gymnast. I have to, you have to give her that. And later on, she does all that bouncing around. Oh, that was true. But that was that had to be yeah. Olga Corbett or something doing that. No, no, that was her. That was Daryl really, those backwards yeah, flips. Yeah, 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 it was Daryl Hannah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Absolutely. So now, what are you guys doing at the warehouse these days? We appreciate you inviting us to your warm bed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Liz. And I'm glad you ate when you were here. Oh, yeah. Well, well there was an ice show to, going yeah. on. So thanks we, to the uh, National Association, National Association of National Landscape Painters, man. Uh, oh, how did you like the painting show, Steve? Did, were you impressed? Yeah, I like that stuff. They I do know. a similar thing with the. I like this guy. That's nice. nice. <laughs> like, no, I like it. I was hearing somebody out there talking about it. Some old guys lived in the neighborhood for years. He never had his stuff shown right here. He always wanted to, and they said, "Oh, come on in." Usually they said, "They said usually they wait a few years before they bring somebody in for art shows." They said he could come in right away for a show. Steve, that, that was nice. nice. That is nice. Well, why do you paint with those latex gloves on? Don't you think that sort of, you know, sort of, I don't know, inhibits your natural feeling there? No. Well, see, I, I do this. Been doing this six days a, six days a week for 15 years, and so much toxins can get in you that you gotta kind of tighten up on. The ocean touch. guy wants to come to his house. Now, now, Steve, where was your last show? Oh, last show was at uh, some school in Norfolk, Virginia Wesleyan University. Um, I had 150 canvases, sort of one room, just kind of lining the wall, and everything was four bucks a piece, and everybody was grabbing them, so that was great. And and That's the pieces great that we can scam. see. I like that idea. No, it's good. See, I, I think of my stuff as more like environments <coughs> and individual pieces, because I I like painting them more maybe than looking at them. I just, I just have a good time painting. So, yeah, so I've, I've probably it, six days a week. What now? Six days a week for how long? Fifteen years. Yeah. And how many do you do a day? Well, now I'm up to sixteen a day. So eight to time twice. You do I, the math at home, but I'm right. like a bunch of paints. Right? I've sold, I've sold seven hundred pictures since. Um, Excuse me. Since last October. Since last October. Yeah. At four dollars a piece. That's five. No, thousand. sometimes, sometimes they're four. Four for ten bucks, and sometimes they're you know, five bucks a piece. Now, what would you say was the median? That's actually five thousand five hundred pennies a year. What would you say was the median? Price. Um, oh, price. Median price, so like five bucks, three bucks. No, yeah, two fifty. Does the IRS know about this? <laughs> no, you do. I do declare. You do have to declare because you get money back. Because I spend much. More, well, right now I kind of break even with art supplies. Would usually spend about five thousand a year on everything, and so you got to declare all that, and then you get your money back. I like that. It's a, it's a good scam to be able to do hey, it. Hey, maybe you can come and be the accountant for us. <laughs> we need somebody. To come well, you guys haven't made money yet, have you? Oh, absolutely. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did you make money on Uncle Patty? Uh, yeah, we made a lot of money on Uncle Patty's What'd way. you do with it? Um, we uh, paid back uh, everybody that we owed money to. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, uh, we paid 64% of our debts. We, the money that we recovered we, we, uh, represented 64% of our production costs. So everybody got 64 cents on the dollar. Right, exactly. But nobody, none of the actors or anything got paid. A couple actors actually made a little bit of money. Yeah, some of the smaller debts are paid outright and, and yeah. fully. But the investors, the people that put the money in, uh, didn't get all back. However, it's the movie's going to be sold in Europe. We just got uh, six 
uh, companies in Europe. We've got Nation Concession marketing at Uncle Patty's Wake in Europe. So we've got uh, six sales in Europe right now. So that'll actually result in a check sometime in four or five months. Your publisher will be able to go and collect dollars. money for you from European. Right, 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 right. They get royalties and stuff like that. The trick is to keep on making them, to keep on having the product. And eventually what ends up happening is you make something that's good, and then the, that lifts the value of all the rest of your product. <laughs> all the crap that you made before you yeah, did yeah, what yeah, you were yeah, doing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we made it's some crap. Like, um, uh, Michael J. Fox and Teen Wolf, you know? I mean, that movie never went anywhere until he made it big on TV. And then it's all of a sudden he made it big, and then Teen video Wolf. stores were flooded with Teen Wolf. It was a really terrible movie. I don't know why and anybody would see that. What? Did you see it? No, I only watched about oh. five minutes of it. Enough to know. Yeah, enough to get the, the gist. Yeah. So, now when did so you we're really hoping for a Teen Wolf cash in. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we will. We, and Uncle Patty's Wake, and, and both Uncle Patty's Wake and Cologne are the kind of movies that, when they're discovered in retrospect, um, They'll do very well. People will look at them. They're they're critic proof uh, because they're so original. You understand them, right? right? Exactly. Exactly, Miles. Yeah, exactly. That's a good plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So you make something that's very obscure yeah. and that appears to be very intelligent. There's a lot of little catchwords you can drop. Our next movie. The only, way, the only way that we could have gotten away with that is because uh, beta punks are critics of movies themselves. You know. So yeah. we're just not, you know, we're not movie makers. No, you know, Miles, that's the most incredible thing. Entertainment. Is that right. true, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the most, ingre the most incredible thing. Is that everybody comes up to us and wants to make a movie, okay? They don't watch movies. People that do things in the public access stations, we're public access hounds. Right. That's how we got together and we did our first movie. It was a public access uh, production. Um, they don't watch movies. They're not interested in the history of movies. They're not interested in any of that stuff at all. They're convinced that their artistic message is worth more. Yeah, that, that's, they're these, like, you know, everybody thinks that they're, uh, you know, Virginia Woolf or somebody, that they can just come out with the stuff on their own and not be connected to their contemporary, their peers, to other people making We, however, uh, realize that entertainment is a scam. It's, a, it's this, this thing that's foisted upon the American All public. entertainment? Or most entertainment, yeah, sure. It's all designed to. And what, about make what if it's really entertaining? What if it's really entertaining? Well, that's fine. That Name shows some. That, that, that shows us some people out what, there. What do you count. find entertaining, Miles? What, what can you turn on the TV during the week oh. and that you yourself will find to be entertaining? Core TV, but of course, that's not really supposed to be entertainment. But it is. Uh huh. It's packed. That's yeah, I agree. There's some. Okay, Core TV is how, on how many hours of that can you watch? Oh, tell us. Oh, you mean. A day? Oh, that's on cable. It's core on TV. All the time. So like Would you admit that that's a quirk of your own? I don't think so. They wouldn't keep it on just for me. Um, <laughs> You'd be amazing. Yeah, right. yeah. Is, is court TV meant to be entertaining, or is it meant to be sort of informative? Well, I it's think just, I court think itself it's is meant to be court, but right. somebody right. packages no, it for it's, television. It's that sort of wonderful voyeurism. Yeah. Well, well like, um, it's other people's dirty laundry. What else is, is entertaining? Uh, I don't watch telly. I watch the EastEnders. No, I that forever. Oh, well, uh, MTV has a thing called Liquid Television on Sunday nights. That's really good, but that's uh, animation and stuff. And um, that's entertaining. Ren and Stimpy's entertaining. Ren and Stimpy's entertaining. Right, uh-huh. Um, and so, uh, Simpsons Parts are fantastically yeah. entertaining. But and informative. Right, and, right. Uh, you know. But, see, there's this, there's this, like, there's this thought. Seinfeld. Seinfeld, very funny guy. Very interesting. There's this thought abroad in our community that, you know, well, there's a lot of people in Missouri who are watching Cheers or watching some other uh, television program, and that these programs are entertaining only this really low common denominator of thought, of, of thinking in the United States. And I think that with, with as the technology descends and turns out that anybody can make a TV show, we're going to find that they're all going to be good. That those people are only watching those things because they've got nothing else to do. You know, St. Louis is a pretty boring place. In fact, the Betapunk's plan is we're going to raise enough money to buy the city of St. Louis and replace it with the jungle. That is our focus. That's, That's our raison d'etre. You think it's like you could get Detroit probably for four figures. Yeah, and, yeah. Because yeah. they'd sell it right now. No, what about yeah. the money aspect of it? I mean, you're. You're making the films, you're obviously hoping to make money on them. Yeah, yeah. Beta Post is, a, is definitely an exercise designed to make a lot of money. With money comes resources, and with resources comes a broader ability to get across. Uh, and someday messages. they'll be making cheers. That's the thing, you see. Yeah. They'll have their own yeah, show, yeah, the yeah, stupid yeah, bartender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's so hard to say. But, um, because did you ever see my own private Idaho? That was Hollywood, right? Uh -huh. In a way, but it was it was weird, and, mm -hmm. and I found it entertaining. And mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of Americans did apparently. It came right. around twice, right. right? So you can't say that. Well, you know, everybody's got this sort of podunk. Right. Uh, but the very interesting thing about that is that during the making of it, the director 
um, Gus Van Zandt uh, made very clear his intention the next time he made a movie that he would have a much smaller crew that he felt it would be ideal to have like eight people to do this thing and no more than 120 people. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, moving fast, doing it cheap mm -hmm. because the best stuff I've seen lately mm -hmm. has been, you know, moving fast, doing eight well, days. I mean, you know. just the continuity aspect. I mean, making a film, if you stretch it out forever, it's just continuity must be incredibly difficult to keep them. Right. Yeah. Plus, if you have, you know, a, a continually shifting cast of characters, not necessarily on the stage, but backstage, doing right. all the I think Sean hit it on the head, he's thinking about the lowest common denominator. I mean, what the hell does that mean? You know, we're really talking about this this product that is sort of boiled down like a uh, pot of carrots on the stove That's for hours and hours to make it, you know, appealing to the English palate. The Unoffensive to anyone. Yeah, exactly. So anything. you don't have anything in there that's going to make anybody from the West Coast upset. There's nothing to get any, you know, little special interest upset. There's what you got here is a love story or a thriller or a hero with a gun <coughs> play or, you know, it's always the same old story that there's this conflict, some guy with a gun saves the day and gets laid at the end of the movie. But that's a lot of that it's is, is driven to. by economy, too, because because if you spend fifty million dollars making a movie, you can't take a chance that, right. that some it group is, is going to be picketing it and everybody will go, well, "I can't see this." Would be well, that's Hollywood's problem. Scene. I mean, they're always trying to get this blockbuster to come out. So, now, do you so, not, do you not so every house? director is trying to, you know, come up with the film that's going to make him or her the next Steven Spielberg. And the problem is, for me, is the guy goes to the movie theater and you know has an extra seven dollars and a couple of hours to kill, wants to entertain my brain for a little while and learn something or have some different perspective. Instead, I'm treated yet to another spectacle with some guy with a gun who saves the day and gets laid at the end of the movie. <laughs> Admittedly, it's a it's, uh, tried and true formula. But yeah. do you not feel that perhaps you might slip into that? That I mean, it's Absolutely not, Lucy. You really not? No. Absolutely not. No, the trick is to keep reading and I think to be interested in things. The next movie that we're doing or that we've talked about doing is uh, The Last Two Minutes in the Life of George Orwell. And uh, when George Orwell was on his deathbed, he convinced through a series of letters this young woman to marry him become his lover right before he died. Three days after he finally got laid, he died. His lung exploded and he had TB. And um, the whole idea with the movie is to... So it's a love story again. Yeah, it's, this is a love story. But what With you a busted is, lung instead of a gun. But see, what, what happens is in the, the, the movie opens up with his lung exploding. So it's the last two minutes of the, you know, his brain sort of closing out. And he sees his life back in retrospect. And his life proves that this whole time, this whole half century of thought, of letters, of thinking, of perspective, of uh, sort of abstract wondering about the world around him, is replaced or has been replaced by this desire of the older man to be with the young, ripe woman in the end. And I really want to slam that. Because our society is set up that way. <laughs> No, it's just slightly easy to set up well, that Miles, way. Look, you're only 23, man. You've yeah, got a long, right. long way to go before you, you get slip into that. You have a set up that way. They have to. This is Steve. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, it's silly. It is. It's, it is. it's absolutely set up that way. It's not... I, I'm not even sure it's, it has anything to do with, with culture or anything else. I don't think you can go anywhere in the world uh -huh. where young men chase old women. I really don't think that you would find that culture. Right. It's just survival of the species. There's this new book out. I saw this lady on the Today Show, too, last week, and it's about how... how amazingly similar like our meeting habits and you know just like reproductive systems and everything are to to you know snails and everything and it's kind of amazing how we really have to look at what happened you know like 300,000 to 300 million years to figure out why we fight all the time with each other. Right, but Steve, they, see, you just you, feel, you put your finger on it right there. It's because of that evolutionary system that we live in a world that's filled with brutality, that all of us are in this nice, warm little place while 40,000 little black kids die in Africa. We don't give a shit about it. Just let them die. Let another 40,000 die tomorrow. The whole point is to evolve, and I think that evolution depends on women cutting off this ridiculous bond to Cosmopolitan magazine and the desires of men. Okay, that as long as men are in charge, the place is going to be this brutal hellhole. I agree with you. I'm, 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 no, I'm totally with you there. And you are really? Yeah, right. oh, sure, absolutely. I mean, I think the feminization of, of our political system will be a great thing. Mm -hmm. But I don't think black we're senator, alter... black woman senator from Illinois this year, yeah, 1992. Sure. That's the kind of thing that we want to see happening. Absolutely. You know? So do I. But what I'm saying is, I don't think that I think that it'll be a long time between the change in our political system and the change in our cultural mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. I really don't think that... Uh, I, I used to think that until... I, think, so. I, I think, think it's the opposite. Culture's going to change yeah. first. Well, the culture is changing marginally, and that's what's culture driving these people to, to Washington. But, but that is that is a, uh, a different kind of... That's a small C culture. I'm talking about a big C culture, the same thing that Steve's talking about with the snails and the birds and the bees, that, um, that mating habits and uh, courtship habits are something that is 
absolutely intrinsic. No. Yeah, well, I mean, but Miles, it's I mean, not that it's good. I it's just, just yeah. you know. <laughs> In the system for it's just not publicized, years. that's all. I mean, just think of it in, in terms of this. If, if you took all of our parents, okay, if you took all of our parents, including Steve's parents, and I don't know Steve very well, but if you took Steve's parents and all of our parents together and you tried to figure out how many times, they, how many part, sexual partners they had, you know, what are we talking about here? Maybe 20, okay? I mean, my not mother and father didn't. Okay, all right, okay. Well, then, then but if you take <laughs> us, if you take us, we're up there, you know, in, a, in, in like two centuries of sexual partners, probably. You know, there's a, there's a lot. So what are you saying? We're better at it or we're more diseased? No, I'm just saying that the culture has changed that much in one generation that there could be another change coming that even far greater. But you see, that's, that hasn't really changed. Uh, our parents' generation and, and the several that preceded it is an aberration. It's a, this whole puritanic thing that came down is, is, a, is an aberration from what is more natural, which is that mm -hmm. the yes, but don't you think men are back towards that with polygamous and, and everything? I mean, really, don't you see the, the trends? I mean, I think that the people 10 years younger than us have very different... Okay, younger than me, not you. Um, 20 years younger than me. 30, 40 years. 40 years younger than me. Um, I think their attitudes are very different. I mean, that's something that's, that's amazed me. Yeah, but, th but again, that's another aberration. This is something that's driven by fear. And, I, and, and I think that probably the, the Puritan thing I was the same thing. I don't think so. I think people are having just as much sex. They're just safer about it. You think so? Yeah. Oh, and, and, and condom sales are going down. Not up. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that in the next 10 <laughs> years, people will be having right. more. I hope that's what they're doing, get it for free. You I think in the next 10 years, I think people will be having more and more unsafe sex. They'll just be having more and more sex. I think that there's going to be much well, more. Is this sort of death wish thing? Or? I don't think it's a death wish. I don't no. think everybody's going to die from it. I think that there's a lot of, in, uh, you know, one of the things that Ecomedia, the, the whole thing that's really interesting is just to sort of think about the, the future of science and what happens. And we had somebody the other day that came to the warehouse. We were talking about this whole science thing, and they expressed AIDS as being this thing like diabetes. And I don't want to go yeah, on TV yeah, right now and start talking about, like, AIDS is only diabetes. Don't worry about it. It's bad news. It's going to be can, controllable, just right, like diabetes. Use the but eventually, yeah, these, there'll be something else, maybe some sort of airborne virus that'll come along. Yeah. But the thing that I think is really interesting, and getting back to the warehouse, you asked about us being in the warehouse and all that. The thing that's really interesting about this warehouse, Miles, you got to come down there and check it out, is that Where is it's, it? it's a 9th, 10th MN in Washington, D.C., in the alleyway, great big uh, brick building, turquoise trim. Blagdenelli. Beautiful, but Blagdenelli. Yeah, it's very cold now, but gotcha. uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, the thing that's really interesting about it is this is sort of a psychological experiment where we're trying to sort of figure out what's going to happen in the near future. Technology with our the, the equipment, the TV equipment, things like that, how cheaply, how easily we can make yeah. a movie, how, how we can communicate it. Different. Eric wants to put in a low power television station right there in downtown DC TV. All right, the, right a there. Real gorilla TV. station, huh? just right. beaming all night. Oh, I right. Know. We've got a guy in the building. In the next couple of years, in the next couple of years, I'll be able to broadcast myself, go to Madagascar, and beam myself from Madagascar with a can of Budweiser in my hand, interrupt the transmission of the Super Bowl, right there, you know, the guy scores a touchdown, boom, cut, and I'll be standing there with a bottle of Bud a can of Budweiser beer going, I never drink this shit. I've never drunk this shit, I'm never going to. And if you do, you're an asshole. Okay, <laughs> boom, back to the Super Bowl, though. right? And everybody will be sitting there going, what in the hell was that? And that's Who progress, was that? You know what's that's what's coming, Miles. People are gonna watch the show and they're gonna say, what the hell was that? But it was slumber party, for those of you who are curious. And how's our pictures? I think it's gone. Ta-da! Beautiful, beautiful. Is that a dog or, or it's a... Zoe! It's, that's Zoe. Was Zoe <laughs> in the play? It's her terrier. No. But Zoe's a part of my life. I know that. And but Steve knows that, obviously, but not a part of your play. No. <laughs> okay, well, you look very, very so attractive. So, now, those are 250? Yeah, these are 250 piece. I don't bring any money with me today. Yeah, yeah you know, I'm skinny. Well. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. borrow a buck, right? Oh, yeah, I got right here. <laughs> hey, <laughs> keep it clean. <laughs> Try anyway. <laughs>